Today we have a very special guest on this channel. Tout en français. Tout en français. Vous avez une oreillette Non, j'ai rien. Rien du tout. Il n'y a rien du tout. Sans ouais. oreillette, sans rien. Ouais, on, on le fait en français. Et ça s'était super bien passé l'autre fois. Timothée Chalamet speaks amazing French, but could he get even better I want to tell you that this video is intended not at all to make fun of him. J'ai aucune confiance, alors. <laughs> but actually to learn from his mistakes. And so I will strive to treat him exactly like I treat my one on one clients, even though being compassionate and holding space for someone is a bit more challenging with a video than with an actual person live on the call. So please keep that in mind. Also, this is a new type of video for me, so I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Please tell me what you think and tell me if you would like to see more like this. Without further ado, let's get to it. Voici le beautiful boy, voici Timothée Chalamet. Tout en français, tout en français. Vous avez une oreillette Non, j'ai rien. Rien du tout. Il n'y a rien du tout. Sans ouais. oreillette, sans rien. Ouais, on, on le fait en français. Et ça s'était super bien passé l'autre fois. C'était bien, mais il y avait Armin la dernière fois. Oui, mais il parlait anglais. Il parlait anglais, alors je faisais un petit peu les deux. Non, mais c'est parfait. Ok, j'essaye cette fois. J'essaye de faire tout en français cette fois. <rire> <rire> on verra. So, the first thing that comes to mind here is that he keeps saying cette fois. What he really means to say is cette fois. Uh, so meaning this time and he speaks very much like natives do when they are in a low pressure environment uh, also children speak a lot like this with um, just eating up the e's and changing a little bit the, the way that things are pronounced so his french is not formal at all that's the first thing that uh, strikes me uh, il était là il y a pas longtemps Army pour oui. son film On the Basis of Sex. Exactement. Avec Felicity, et... il est venu Non, il était tout seul. Il était tout seul Oui, il était et... tout seul. En français, cette fois et Comment En français, cette fois Non, non, c'était en anglais. en anglais. <rire> il est vraiment américain. <rire> il est très américain et il, a, il vous a laissé un mot. Regardez. C'est vrai Timmy, I came to Quotidien without you. You weren't my translator. This was much more difficult. I hope this goes terribly for you now. <rire> terribly. Thank you. Merci, Armie. Pour Timothée, I mean, I hope he's gonna do fine. <rire> Comment ça va Ça va très bien, merci de me recevoir et merci. Vous êtes arrivé quand à Paris Je suis arrivé aujourd'hui, mais j'étais là hier aussi, ça oui. fait un petit peu... Euh... Et vous et... repartez quand quoi Je repars lundi. Et là, oui, on... Vous restez trois jours quoi Je reste trois jours, oui, et on... il y avait un défilé hier, c'est stick comme ça. On va en parler du défilé, oui. Ah, ok, oui. et... Euh... et euh... Et ouais, ça s'est bien passé. <rire> Depuis la fois où vous êtes venu ici, vous êtes devenu une star internationale. Comme, euh, comment vous avez vécu le succès de Call Me By Your Name, votre nouveau statut de plus grand acteur de sa génération mmh. <rire> I don't know, man. I don't, uh, you know. Je ne sais pas, monsieur. Je ne sais pas, ouais, non, c'est... Je traduis. So, yeah, what happens here is that the, he's a bit taken aback by the question, I mean... I think that uh, everyone would be taken aback with this question uh, if they don't have like a huge ego. Um, question like, how do, you, how do you live as the biggest actor in your generation is, is tricky. And so his reaction is to uh, speak English again, just saying, I, I don't know, man. Um, if you are in this situation, in a similar situation in your life, and someone asks you a question and you don't really know what to say, um, especially if you're in an environment where there is pressure, try not to speak English, just, you know, The solution against that is to close your mouth simply while you think about what to say in French. C'est franchement, j'ai beaucoup de gratitude, ça se dit en français, oui. Et, uh... So also something I don't recommend you do if you're in an environment where there is pressure and where you're going to be judged. Um, do not say things like uh, ça se dit en français. That's something that um, he does several times in this interview. This is already the second time that he does it. And for him it's fine because he's in this environment where um, Everybody is, is being helpful to him, uh, especially Jan Barthes, the, the moderator. But if you're in an environment where there is pressure, uh, you don't want to uh, double check your French. This is fine when you're in a class, this is fine when you're with friends, uh, this is fine if I'm coaching you, you can do that with me totally. Uh, but if you're at work, and actually he's at work, uh, don't do that. Just go with the words that you know or just give it your best shot um, so you don't come off as insecure. Et franchement, j'ai toujours voulu être acteur ou être dans des, dans des films. Alors, avoir la possibilité de travailler, travailler souvent, avoir la possibilité de payer mon, mon, mon loyer, mon loyer. <rire> c'est bien. Alors, c'est. Mais la célébrité, par exemple. Mm. 
Si... Comme la transformation, parce que j'imagine depuis deux ans, ça s'est beaucoup transformé. Oui, oui et non. Oui et non. Et il euh, y a des moments où je, je, sens, je sens que ça, ça, ça changeait d'une manière, mais il y a des autres moments où je me sens vraiment... Euh, je me suis fait virer d'un resto à Los Angeles. Il y a, bon, pourquoi il y a So, uh, je me suis fait virer, as also not something you want to say in a professional context, it's uh, actually slang. Uh, it, would, it would be better to say j'ai été expulsé d'un restaurant. C'était un truc, c'était que pour des membres, je ne savais, savais pas, mais euh, je me suis fait vraiment virer. Et vous n'avez pas dit, hé, hey, mais je suis Timothée. Non, mais je ne sais rien, ça ne veut rien dire. Ça ne veut rien dire. Right, so the same remark as I made before, uh, he just is a bit tripped out of his French personality. I mean, it's very clear that he speaks French fluently, that he even thinks in French, but when he's a bit taken aback, he speaks English again like that. Uh, this is something you want to avoid doing, uh, especially if you're in an environment where there is pressure, where people are going to judge you. You are still modest. Personne ne vous a dit, dis donc, tu prends la grosse tête. Non, j'ai aucune confiance. Alors, <laughs> so two things here. Uh, first, Yann Barthes is telling him, uh, personne ne t'a dit. So nobody told you that tu prends la grosse tête. Literally means you're getting a big head. Uh, so in English we say you're too big for your boots. And the second thing is that Timothée Chalamet answers with j'ai aucune confiance. Uh, this is a mistake actually. He means to say j'ai aucune confiance en moi. So I have no self-confidence. That's what he means to say. Um, j'ai aucune confiance actually means I have no trust in another person. So that happens because in French we only have one word for trust and confidence, which is confiance. And so he trips up a little bit here. But, you know, everybody gets it. It works very well with the context. Non, j'ai... Oui, non. <laughs> Aujourd'hui, il y a les chalamaniacs et certains d'entre eux considèrent que vous êtes euh, une œuvre d'art qui mérite de se retrouver dans les œuvres d'art. Vous avez vu ça Oui, j'ai vu. <laughs> Alors, la jeune fille à la perle de Johannes Vermeer, par exemple. Le baiser de Gustav Klimt, vous êtes en haut, là-haut. La naissance de Vénus, de Botticelli, euh, American Gothic, est très réussi, de Grant Wood. Le cri, de Munch. Le déjeuner des canotiers, de Pierre-Auguste Renoir, vous êtes à droite, là. Et garçon à la corbeille de fruits, de Caravage. On préfère... Ça vous fait quel effet bah, pour, pour moi, oui. ça fait très bizarre. Et, euh, parce que c'était déjà arrivé d'être photoshopé sur quelque oui. chose. <laughs> right, so here something really interesting is happening. Um, he tells to Jan Barthes, ça t'est déjà arrivé et qu'est-ce t'en pense? Which means he's using tu, which is a familiar form, and that uh, you would never want to do in a professional context, especially not with someone you don't know very well. And you will notice that, again, Jan Barthes is very kind, so he doesn't say anything about that. Um, but he himself keeps saying vous to Timothée Chalamet, which is how it should be. And uh, at this point, when I was watching the interview, I was starting to think that Timothée Chalamet speaks French uh, a little bit like a child, because as children, you're used to all the time, and especially, and even with adults, uh, like with the school teachers, when you're very young, you would use to, and uh, with your family members, you would use to your entire life. So that made me think, hmm, he really speaks like a child. I wonder if he lived in France as a child. And so I looked it up and I found that uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, Timothée Chalamet is fluent in English and French and he holds dual citizenship because his father is actually French and his uh, grandparents on his father's side live in France and he used to spend summers uh, with them when he was a child. So that explains a lot of things about how he speaks French because his French is definitely the French of a person younger um, than he actually is. So it's very obvious from the way that he speaks French that his French is that of someone who has lived in France as a child and has learned French as a child and then hasn't really uh, upgraded his language to speak like an adult. So that's unlikely to happen to you if you haven't lived in France as a child. But if you have, or um, in general, you don't want to speak like this, you want to really Um, there are very small tweaks that you can do to come off more as an adult. And for example, not saying to when you shouldn't is a very big thing of that. So if I were Timothée Chalamet's coach, uh, the first thing I would teach him is to use vous and use it appropriately. I don't know honestly if he can even use vous because throughout the entire interview, he doesn't use it a single time. So maybe he just never learned it, um, which of course, I mean, everybody is very kind to him, so it's fine. Uh, they are amazed that an American person can even speak French at all, so it goes well for him. But if you have to speak French, in a work environment or a situation where there is pressure and you are expected to come off as a responsible adult, don't do that because it might not go as well for you as it does for him.
Euh... C'est joli C'est joli, oui Parce que vous êtes beau <laughs> Ok, clearly, I... <laughs> he right away he says vous êtes beau, so he knows how to use vous. He is not very familiar with how to use it and when to use it, I guess. But um, at least in this one case, he does say it. Quand vous tombez là-dessus, vous dites « Ah, ça va trop loin !» Non, non, parce que c'est bizarre, c'est rigolo, c'est, c'est, si on m'aurait dit ça à 12 ans, ou 16 ans, même, ou 18 ans, 19 ans, j'aurais rigolé, et, oh, les grands, yes, parce que, so, rigolo and rigolé are also really children words that you, that adults don't use so much unless if they're in a family or environment. So, that's the word you don't want to use, uh, you just want to say drôle, uh, and instead of j'ai rigolé, you can say j'ai ri. C'est ça que je veux faire avec ma vie, alors, euh... Pendant l'instant, je peux le faire. J'espère que je peux le faire longtemps. On ne sait jamais. Votre nouveau film s'appelle My Beautiful Boy. C'est avec vous et Steve Carell. Vous interprétez Nick Chef. S-H-E-F-F. -F. Oui. Steve Carell joue votre père, David Chef. C'est une histoire vraie. Vous pouvez la raconter en quelques mots. En quelques mots, c'est sur, euh, sur un père un, et son fils aux états unis au San Francisco. Et le fils euh, est sort un à sa vie euh, assez normale, on dirait que... Il est bourgeois Et euh, bourgeois, un peu au milieu, on, je sais pas. Um. So here you have more signs that his French is very comfortable, but also a bit uh, childlike. He says, je uh, sais pas. that's only something that uh, either children or people with not a lot of education would say in French. If you have uh, a situation where you need to speak French at work, please go for je sais pas, or even je ne sais pas. That would be a bit too much if you add the ne. But um, je sais pas really comes off as... Just um, street French, really. Et uh, c'est pas, c'est pas, euh, euh, c'est pas le détail euh, essentiel au film. Son, son uh, privilege, comme on dit en anglais. Et um, uh, en fait, il devient uh, victime du drogue. Uh, mais uh, je, je crois que le point du film, c'est en fait qu'on voit pas le, c'est pas du, du point de vue du fils, parce qu'on a déjà des films comme ça, like Train Spotting ou Christian F. C'est plutôt du point de vue du père. Du père. Et je sais pas euh, les numéros, les chiffres en France, mais aux états unis en ce moment, c'est vraiment un problème extraordinaire. So it's really interesting what happened uh, here. I want to comment on the word uh, numéro, chiffre, and then uh, general situation. Um, he says, je sais pas les numéros, and then he corrects himself into les chiffres. That's because in French, we have several words for number. Uh, one being numéro, which is like a phone number, and chiffre being more like uh, figures, or the numbers of the drug numbers in this case. Um, so he realizes that he uses the wrong one, then he corrects himself. Uh, that's very well played of him. Of course, it's better not to do that. It's better to have the right word right away. But if you're in that situation, it's fine to do this. I think even in a professional context, it's totally fine to do this. It does it very well. And in general, in the situation here, uh, we can see that he is... Um, the, he's not as familiar... Um, he's not as comfortable with the topic as he was before. And My interpretation of that is that this is a very adult topic when you're in a situation of speaking about uh, drug use and drug abuse in, uh, in a movie and in cinema. We understand that he has all the ideas because he's, a, he's an adult and he's a professional actor and he knows all of that in English, but he's not often in a situation of speaking in French about this. And so he... Um, so he is looking a bit more for his words and that's... Actually, I think here he does a very great demonstration of what um, ideally you want to be able to do if you have to work and your French is not really up to speed with what you need to do, uh, is just using the actual words that you have and striving to express complex ideas with simple words. And he does it amazingly well. This is a beautiful demonstration here. C'est le plus grand tueur aux États-Unis, l'addiction aux overdoses. Et je ne sais pas en France aussi, mais avec des gens de mon âge aux États-Unis. On a fait des reportages là-dessus sur ce qui s'est passé aux États-Unis, ouais. oui. Oui, c'est vraiment partout. C'est vraiment partout. Et, et ce qui est pire, c'est qu'il n'y a, y a pas le dialogue, euh, y a pas le dialogue de, du, du fixe encore. So, um, like I was saying here, he doesn't really have the, the words, so he doesn't really know how to say fix or solution. Uh, he, like, at this precise moment, he doesn't get the word, and so he says, il uh, n'y a pas le dialogue du fixe. Uh, what he would need to say is something like, on ne parle pas de comment réparer uh, la situation ou de trouver des solutions. That would be how to say this. Encore, c'est toujours, à mon avis, c'est le dialogue de martyrdom. Comment dire martyr en français? Martyr ou... Uh, martyr. Yeah. Right. And this, uh, with the word martyr, and also before with the word uh, overdose, uh, overdose in French, overdose in English, 
Um, this is also a sign that he has learned French as a child and when you're a child you don't speak so much about overdose and martyrs and so he does not know those words in French even though they're actually the exact same words and he also doesn't have uh, the strategy to identify that these are French words that have been actually borrowed and used in English or that the words are the exact same in French. So this is actually something that I teach to my clients. I, I um, teach you to, if a word looks like French, then it probably is French. So what you want to do in this situation is to take the word and actually pronounce it French. So overdose, try to say, okay, try with overdose and it's very likely that it will work. Most like 90% of the time, this kind of thing will work. And so same is true for martyr. Just pronounce it martyr as a martyr and then it works. But he doesn't know this strategy because he has not learned French as an adult. He learned French as a child. And so he is really relying on the, the knowledge that he has from his childhood French. And it's very obvious that he speaks great French, that he even thinks in French. But sometimes the words are missing. So that's really interesting to see a person in this situation um, speaking French because it's not often that we get to see that. Martyr. Ah, ouais, c'est il y a un... c'est cool ou c'est de se détruire et c'est pas nouveau ça dans les années 60 on disait déjà ça que d'être jeune et whatever et, uh, living on the edge is cool mais vivre avec les risques. Ouais, vivre avec des risques mais um... Mais par rapport aux années 60, sauf que là, 70, sauf que là c'est une drogue très très dure. C'est ça, c'est ce que j'allais dire. C'est la les... mette. C'est ça. Et dans les années 60, 70, j'étais pas là, mais c'est mon. Euh, je comprends que les drogues avant, c'était pas aussi. Euh, c'était pas aussi. C'était pas aussi puissant. puissant. Et en fait, c'est des, des drogues LSD, marijuana qui qui ouvraient l'imagination pour pourrait dire. Et maintenant, c'est les drogues opiates qui ferment l'imagination. So here we have the situation again, where he doesn't know uh, LSD. Marijuana, uh, opiates in French, even though they're actually uh, cognates. I mean, you can say marijuana in French, uh, you can say LSD. LSD is actually the name. Uh, opioids would be les opiacés. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't know those words because he has probably not thought that he would speak about that and that he would need to know those words. So he just uses them in English. This works because, again, everybody is very kind. Um, if you're in a professional situation and you have to speak about this, you want to practice it before in a safe, in a safe space and um, at least research those words so you know the words that you need to use, uh, the important words that you need to use. Because, yeah, it works for him, but depending on what your job is, it may not work for you. Tu peux être sur un croisier, tu peux être dans une condition horrible, mais si tu prends ces drogues, ça te... Ça le renferme. Même. Ça renferme. Ouais. Et c'est pas une coïncidence parce que c'est 2019... C'est un temps très bizarre, surtout aux États-Unis. <laughs> Here he uses the word uh, temps, uh, meaning time, uh, a little bit incorrectly. What he wants to say better, if you are speaking about time like an, an epoch, an era, it's better to say, c'est une époque très bizarre. Uh, temps, it, makes, it means either weather or it means the, the duration of time. So here, uh, yeah, époque, or if it's one year, you can say année too. Uh, et, uh... Et un, un petit fixe, un petit truc qu'on peut faire pour aider, c'est d'avoir le dialogue sans euh, la discussion que c'est un moralité, c'est un, c'est quelqu'un qui moral. C'est un, ouais, c'est un, fa c'est un, c'est failure de moralité. Parce que... So here again, he has the situation that he doesn't know how to say this. Um, um, you know, moral failure. It's not something that children speak about. What you could say is un échec moral. So on pourrait parler du, de la question de la drogue sans avoir l'impression que c'est un échec moral. That would be how I would say that. Parce que quand les gens deviennent addictés, c'est pas parce qu'ils étaient faibles. So, addicté, uh, also a word that doesn't exist in French. He actually tried to uh, use the word addict and, and make it into French. Uh, unfortunately, that's one of the rare, rare cases when it doesn't work. Uh, you could say être accro, that would be a bit familiar, or you could say être dépendant. Moi, j'avais peut-être un stéréotype avant que d'être addicté, c'était d'avoir une fête euh, énorme pour un an, deux ans, trois ans. Mais la réalité, c'est qu'il y a beaucoup de, de peine dans le monde. This is again a situation where he uses a, the word pen. Pen in French doesn't really mean pain. It means something closer to sorrow. So what he means to say is that il y a beaucoup de souffrance dans le monde. That's how I would say that. Et il n'y a pas beaucoup de solutions et, des, et tu tombes, tu peux tomber dans ça. Les gens qui sont tombés, c'est pas un truc euh, avec la fériété. C'est très difficile de s'en sortir. Uh, again, something that's uh, perhaps a reasoning a bit too complex for uh, his uh, childhood French. Uh, c'est pas quelque chose avec la fierté. That's not really French. What you would say is, c'est pas quelque chose dont on peut être fier. Et de s'en sortir à un âge de 19 ans, 20 ans, c'est presque impossible. Et votre personnage, le, le héros, il a, il a tout pour, pour être heureux. 
C'est pour ça que le père ne piche pas, ne comprend pas. Pardon. So it's really interesting what happens here. Uh, Yann Barthes says, c'est pour ça que le père ne piche pas et then he immediately corrects into ne comprend pas. So piger is a uh, slang word for comprendre. Means, uh, to comprendre means understand and piger is a slang for understand. So the father doesn't get it. And it's really interesting what happens here because it feels that Yann Barthes uh, is getting used to the level of French that Timothée Chalamet is using. And he also gets down to getting more colloquial, more slangy, more street French. But he immediately realizes that he, he cannot afford to speak like this uh, in his work because he's uh, the moderator of a very important TV show. And he does a very quick snap in his brain. It's like, oh my God, I, I can't speak like that. I can't use these kind of words at work because probably if I do, I'll get fired. You can't speak in slang to your guest, uh, even if he's an American man who has learned French as a child. So there's a split moment. C'est pour ça que le père ne piche pas, ne comprend pas, pardon. Right, so he says, ne piche pas, ne comprend pas, pardon. Because he, actually, pardon means uh, sorry. He apologizes for using the wrong level of French, which, again, it's fine for Timothée Chalamet, it's not fine for Yann Barthes. And it could not be fine for you, depending on where you're speaking French. Pardon. Et il comprend pas, et, et pour le père aussi, il y a un... un... Bon, je veux pas, je veux, que, je, veux, je veux que les gens voient le film, alors... Euh, mais je veux, pas, je veux pas tout dire, mais le père... Euh... Il y a peut-être une question de ego aussi, en se disant qu'est-ce que je peux faire pour mon fils, qu'est-ce que j'ai fait de mal, qu'est-ce que je peux faire pour le, le, le soigner. Et c'est un des, je pense, une leçon du film, c'est que une fois qu'on est tombé, pourquoi on est tombé, c'est pas aussi important euh, par rapport à qu'on est tombé. C'est la réalité. We must move forward. Il faut qu'on avance. Il faut... says pourquoi on est tombé, c'est pas aussi important par rapport à qu'on est tombé. So that's a bit of a broken structure here. What he should say in good French is par rapport au fait qu'on est tombé. Il faut en trouver une solution et il faut avoir, euh, comment dire, l'amour, ça peut s'appliquer en famille, en français Oui. Uh, right, so here he also asks for confirmation for the use of the word amour uh, in, uh, in the family. And Jan Barthes says yes. Uh, again, everybody here is very kind in the situation, but um, if you're in a situation where there's a lot of pressure, either you stick to the words that you're sure of or you give it your best shot, uh, but don't ask ça peut s'appliquer, because that would make you come off as a person who, you know, does not speak French very well, or is not sure, or not confident. So, fine for him, maybe not fine for you. But, okay, il faut, il faut avoir l'amour de, de les gens qui t'aiment. Qui... Here, Timothée Chalamet makes a really interesting mistake that my clients often make, and it's, he says de les, while de and les together, that becomes des. Qui t'aiment, qui, qui te supportent, et... Et s'il y a les gens qui ont, qui ont, qui ont ça dans, dans leur vie, il faut surtout se protéger. Mais aussi, il faut... You gotta put your arms out. And, uh, Ouvrir les bras. Il, ouais, il faut... Accueillir. Euh, il faut accueillir et... Et, et les et, personnages que vous jouez sont vrais Ils sont encore vivants Ils sont vrais, il est vivant. Alors Nick, il est vivant maintenant sober. Comment dire sober en français Sobre. Sobre, il est sober pour 8 ans maintenant. On les voit ici. On les, alors c'est Nick à côté, ouais. Et, uh, et David, et Steve Crowley à côté de David, qui est le père. Et, uh, So here, there's also a very common mistake that uh, my client make, uh, American clients, il est, il est sobre pour 8 ans. Non, il est sobre depuis 8 ans. Pour is the word you would use for the total duration. So it feels as if he uh, was sober for 8 years. That was like, that's the plan that he'd be sober for 8 years and then he would just start, you know, using drugs again. No, he is sober Um, he has been sober since a uh, time eight years ago. So it's very difficult to explain that in English because it's different uh, in French, but il est sobre depuis huit ans. That's what you want to say. Et en fait, euh, il a, dans le film, il y a four relapses. Alors il y a quatre fois où Nick, il, il essayait d'être sober et il tombe. Et dans la vie, il y avait treize. Il a fait treize uh, dans sept ans. Il the a... word for relapse uh, is rechute, une rechute. And so he uses the verb tomber, which is a good strategy because it's close enough, right? It's, it's, fall, it's like falling again. Uh, but the word, the actual word is rechute. If you are in a situation where you don't know a word, it's a good strategy to use a close word. So he does it very well here. So, yep, kudos. Sept ans. Il a écrit le livre, il a fait un relapse sur le, en promotion du livre. Alors, maintenant, il est bien. Maintenant, il est, bon, il est, il est, il est vivant, il est, il est là. Et I wish he was here. J'aurais bien aimé qu'il soit là. Voilà. Parce que, 
quand il est là, juste d'être là dans, son, dans sa forme pour les gens qui a, ont été addictés. C'est un exemple. C'est un exemple de quelqu'un qui a battu euh, l'addiction et qu'on peut, on peut avoir un vie après. On peut, on peut être euh, employed, on peut gagner de l'argent, on peut avoir euh, des petites copines, um, like uh, une petite copine. <laughs> so here throughout, we see that he's struggling a bit because again, he has childhood French and, and he is explaining very adult things. So several words are uh, used a couple incorrectly. He uses English words uh, like employed, it's employé in French. And he says, on peut avoir des petites copines and that uh, would be the plural. And I don't know what goes on in his brain, but it's like, oh my God, like you only have one girlfriend at least at a time or, or something like that. And then he corrects himself to say une petite copine. Um, honestly, I think that was not a big mistake and it was actually fine to put it in plural because he's speaking about uh, people in general. So that was fine. But you know, he corrects himself in a rather cute manner. And like, uh, and uh, yeah. My beautiful boy, Florent Salle, le 6 février. Les nominations aux Oscars, c'est quoi Le mardi, je crois Les nominations aux Oscars C'est cette semaine, je crois. Oui. On <laughs> dirait. <laughs> 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 So again, you can see how Jan Barthes is uh, really kind and really uh, on his side, just, you know, crossing fingers for the Oscars. And uh, really, they have a very nice interaction here. It's very friendly. Sur, le, sur votre personnage, un drogué, ça passe par euh, plein de phases. Mm. La défonce, mm. la descente, mm. le manque, la honte, la colère, la dépression. Quand on se renferme, les tics du visage, mm. la mâchoire, euh, les larmes, l'euphorie. C'était quoi le plus difficile à jouer c'était le fait que c'est quelqu'un de vrai et euh, pas un scène spécifique, euh, non plus un détail, mais le fait que Nick, c'est un, 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 un homme vivant et même indépendant de, des drogues ou l'addiction, c'est leur vie, c'est leur famille. Et techniquement, et te comment, comment au niveau un drogué et toutes les fait, émotions En fait, euh, c'était ça la pression d'acteur. Je me sentais à 20 ans, 21 ans, je me disais, c'est quoi le... Qu'est-ce que je dois apprendre Et en fait... C'était ça le lesson aux drogues, aux addictions pour moi. So here, there's a thing interesting that happens. He knows those words, but he doesn't know the gender. Uh, so uh, he also says un scène, it's la scène, it's feminine. Um, la pression, la leçon, they're all feminine, but he always uses them in masculine um, because he doesn't know the gender. It's honestly actually a good strategy that you can use if you really don't know the gender. And I strongly recommend you learn the gender alongside the word because that This is a, a strategy that you can use as a last recourse. There are more masculine words than feminine words in French. So if you default to masculine, when, you, when you're not sure which one to use, uh, if you use systematically the masculine when you're not sure, you will be correct more often than not. But again, uh, that doesn't work all the time. That doesn't work for those three words here. So please strive to learn the uh, gender alongside the word if you can at all, and if you're stuck in that situation where you don't know, you can, as a last recourse, default to me like he does. C'était pas que j'allais jouer un addict, un, un quelqu'un addicté aux drogues, c'était de jouer un humain, un humain qui soit addicté aux drogues. Quand j'ai rencontré Nick, il y avait aucun euh, aspect de son caractère qui était... Il y avait aucun signe. Il y avait aucun signe. Caractère, um, that's the word that... Uh, doesn't work here, or maybe he could say caractère, il y avait aucun aspect de son caractère, Or another word that would be good to use would be personality. Or if he refers to the fictional characters that he plays, uh, a good word is personnage. La scène, c'était comme il était décrit dans le livre de son père. Il, est, il, est, il a un bon sens du mur. Il est... Sauf que, oui, quand vous l'avez rencontré, il était clean. Il était clean, oui, mais... Fun fact, we actually use the word clean in French like that. And it specifically is used for someone who has uh, quit taking drugs. So a sober uh, a former drug addict who is now sober. We wouldn't use it for alcohol, we would use it only for drugs. So they use it perfectly here. Oui, mais on, et, et c'est ça qui lui-même, il dit dans son livre que David dit, c'est comme il y, a, il y a deux personnages, il y a le, il y a le sober, il y a le using, et c'est ça que je pense le film essaie d'adresser aussi. So first, he um, doesn't have words for sober and using in French. Uh, we could say la personne sobre et la personne qui prend des drogues, but we don't really have words that works as well in French as in English here. Um, it's just how the language is made. Uh, and another thing here, uh, he says, ce que le film essaye d'adresser, uh, it's something that English speakers struggle a lot, this expression, because 
it's very difficult to find some thing, some way to say that in French. Here for a movie, it's there's an easy way around. It's you can say le film veut montrer. C'est ça que le film veut montrer. So it's, this is what the movie wants to show. C'est la complexité de quelqu'un qui peut être bon fils, bon frère, aimant, gentil, mais aussi qui 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 can you say rap, qui peut vandaliser, qui peut oui. euh, euh, qui peut tricher, qui peut mentir. Et qu'est-ce que ça veut dire Ça veut dire qu'on ne doit pas aimer notre, les gens dans nos vies ou, ou qu'on doit comprendre que l'humanité, c'est complexe, c'est pas facile. On n'est pas un complet comme humain. On est tous avec des warts, comme on dit en anglais. Um, ah, j'ai pas compris en revanche. Comment dire warts Des petits boutons. On est tous avec des boutons. So the word for warts, actually, in French, is une verrue. But uh, Jan Bartes doesn't know the word words in English. Um, yeah, and overall, uh, in this entire section, it's very clear that Timothée Chalamet is thinking in French, and only when he doesn't have a word, uh, the word pops in his head in English, and then he tries to either stick the word in English or ask for how to say in French. Uh, again, that works very well if you're in an environment that's safe and kind, like he is. Uh, but if you're at work and people are relying on you uh, speaking better French, uh, that might not work for you. So I recommend learning the words as much as you can ahead of time if you know that you're going to use them. Uh, that's why it's so great to have a coach and to practice uh, these exact topics in a conversation, in a safe space, so you have the words when you're in a higher pressure environment. But here, like we said, it's a very kind environment, so that's all good. In the period of Fashion Week in Paris, uh, our specialist mode is here, we've talked about it earlier. You saw yesterday Louis Vuitton, uh -oh. côté de Frank Echean, with the creator Virgil Abloh in the coulisses, and you're a great uh, supporter of Virgil Abloh. <laughs> yes, that's right. Why? Pourquoi? Because I like his clothes, and also, I don't know if it's interesting, il a, il a eu un, un rise, son, son succès aux états unis Il a explosé Il a explosé avec, des, avec surtout des, des artistes, surtout un artiste qui j'ai parlé la dernière fois, Kate Kelly, avec de qui je suis très grand fan. Il est associé avec tous ces gars. Il est très consistent avec ce qu'on a dit avant. Il dit « ces gars », qui est aussi un peu slangish. Il uh, serait mieux de dire « ces personnes » ou « ces hommes ». Et c'est super, ces vêtements sont super. Et, euh... Ça se con. <rire> Et vous les portez pour les Golden Globes. Oui, c'est ça. Vrai. On peut voir les. Ouais. Alors, on a beaucoup parlé de ce harnais. Il ouais. euh, y, y a eu de, de gros débats sur les réseaux sociaux. Fallait-il qu'il ait un harnais <rire> Mais il avait un harnais. Mais c'est quoi ce harnais Moi, euh... je croyais que c'était un bib. C'est quoi un bib Un bib en, en, en bib aux États-Unis, c'est que si tu mets. Ouais, c'est quand tu manges, quand t'es petit pour. Ah euh, oui, euh, d'accord. <rire> un bavoir. Un bavoir. Ouais. Ouais, on m'a dit, ouais, on dit que c'était un bavoir. Mais après, j'ai vu tous ces trucs sur l'internet, like, euh, les trucs euh, sexe de dungeon, <rire> des basements, tout ça, on rien dans ouais. Right, so this, this is cute and funny, of course, I really wanted to include it. And you can see how, obviously, these are things that a child could not speak about. So even though the word uh, dungeon is translates exactly uh, in French as un donjon, it's a cognate, Um, he, there's no way he could know that with the, the French that he learned in his childhood. And uh, yeah, the comparison with a bib, un bavoir, is also really cute. I, I just like it. Ouais. Marc aime beaucoup ça. Oui, je ça. <rire> ça m'irait moins bien. Hein. Et quand, quand vous l'avez vu, vous avez dit, quand on vous l'a donné, vous avez dit, OK, je le mets. Non, en fait, c'est rigolo parce qu'on essaye de le mettre et personne dans le fitting savait qu'on le mettre. <rire> ah, on était là, être comme ça, et sinon, c'est pas comme ça. Alors, non, mais. <rire> Mais euh, tout le monde est dans les, les jackets, comment dire, les costumes. Oui, dans les costumes. Alors c'est bien d'essayer. Du coup, on a vu que vous. <laughs> no, vous avez no, tout no. gagné. So here, uh, he says, vous avez tout gagné. And the, the person who made the subtitle translates that as you ruined everything. And honestly, uh, that's, that's just wrong. <laughs> What Ayane Barthes says is you won everything. So it's not the same at all. So he's actually giving Timothée Chalamet a, a, a compliment. Where vous avez tout gagné. Not you ruined everything. So you won everything. Yeah. No, Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga, Lady there. Gaga aussi. Yeah. Au Golden Globes, comme toujours, votre partenaire était votre mère. Est elle, est, elle est rigolote et vous allez être bien amusé avec elle. Ouais, c'était bien. Vous avez bien posté. C'était bien avec elle. No shoes. No shoes. <laughs> Elle vous suit partout Pardon Elle vous suit partout elle, ouais, est ouais, elle, elle est à Paris, est... par exemple Non, elle est à New York en ce moment, mais euh, elle regardera ça. Et il faut que je fasse surtout attention. Maintenant, je ne savais pas, quand tu commences à faire les émissions comme ça, émissions comme ça, tu dis... Oh, wow, what a cute uh, 
almost a Freudian slip. It says emotion instead of emission, and then he corrects himself. So les émotions are emotions. Les émissions are uh, TV programs or talk shows. Tu peux, tu penses, tu peux dire les, les histoires que personne va les voir. Alors que c'est la dernière fois que je dis ici, on a, j'avais dit que ma sœur, elle était, elle avait, un, elle était amoureuse d'un acteur français. Oui. Elle m'a, elle m'a déchiré après. <laughs> so this is also slangish. Elle m'a déchiré. His sister ripped him apart for saying that she used to be in love with a French actor. Um, you, you can't say that uh, in a works in a serious context, elle m'a déchiré, you, you don't say that, uh, you would say something like, um, elle m'a disputé. Redis. Ouais. <laughs> du, coup, ah ouais. Ouais. du coup, vous le redites. Ouais, non, 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 non. C'était non. qui l'acteur français, je m'en souviens plus. Je ne peux pas dire parce qu'elle <laughs> avait dit aussi, elle dit, ah, well, that's not even true. <laughs> like, so, like, oh. euh, vous allez tourner, on en parlait pendant la pub, vous allez tourner en France, Et en mars, un, on peut le dire un, ou pas Angoulême, ça se dit comme ça Angoulême, oui. Angoulême. Euh, c'est un village ou une ville C'est une ville. C'est une ville. C'est une ville. Ouais. Euh... I don't know. I don't know. C'est, 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 c'est une insultante de demander. Pas du tout. Ok, so um, a bit actually. Like uh, let's let's uh, let's unpack what happened here. It has Cliff Angoulême is a village. Uh, well, it's actually a, a city. At least uh, for the French standard, it's a city. I don't know. Like in American standards, it's more like a town, I guess, in size. Uh, but for France, it's totally a city. And uh, the the audience laughs uh, because it's just you know very candid, very. Uh, cute and genuine uh, and then he asks uh, if it's an if it's insulting to uh, to ask if Angoulême is a village and, and Yann Barthes again is very kind uh, very absolutely adorable like no not at all you did nothing wrong uh, but to be honest uh, it, it is a bit insulting and you don't want to do that again if you're in a context where there is more pressure and it's, it's more formal and people are not super kind to you Uh, or people are not completely willing to be super kind to you. you, you don't want to do that, especially if it's about their village or something that they think you should know. Of course, no one in their right mind would expect an American actor to know about the size of Angoulême because it's very, it's very much about France uh, itself. And even if he's scheduled to go there, we can't expect him to know that. But if you're in a situation where you would be expecting to know these kind of things, either you do know it or you just don't. Like, Don't ask this kind of questions. It's it could go wrong for you. Okay. Um, non, ça on va tourner là-bas et, on, et à Léa Cédou qui a déjà commencé. Euh, c'est euh, Wes Anderson, c'est le réalisateur, c'est un de mes réalisateurs préférés. Il a fait Grand Budapest Hotel and Isle of Dogs and Rushmore. Alors, euh, on va, je vais commencer le mois prochain. C'est l'île des chiens et vous, oui, c'est, oui, c'est euh, oui, le Buda, Grand Budapest Hotel. C'est ça. Ouais. Et c'est le réalisateur de ces films et, et après ça, je fais Dune. Et Dune. Dune, qui est un, un livre euh, science-fiction, on dit ça, et c'est un truc très... Euh, oui. Like, uh, c'est comme Star Wars. C'est un blockbuster. Ouais, c'est ça, ouais. Ouais. So, fun fact, we actually say blockbuster in French because there is no way that we have a word for that. Like, we don't even have blocks in French, or we have things that look like blocks, but they're not the kind of size that you have in the US. So, we just say blockbuster. Ouais. C'est de Denis Villeneuve. Ah, j'ai pas vu ce... J'aime beaucoup cette couverture, j'ai pas vu... C'est, très, c'est, ouais, c'est magnifique. Très épique. It's, uh, honestly, Timothée Chalamet did so well in this interview. It's very clear that he hasn't particularly been prepared or coached before uh, to speak French. He just went there with the French that he has learned as a child. So congratulations to him for doing the entire interview in French. It is so challenging to speak a foreign language uh, when you have so many people watching you. And he did absolutely amazing. So congrats to him. If you have a video of your favorite celebrity who's speaking French and you want me to analyze it in the same way, please send me the link and I will put that, all of that in a playlist, um, especially if they're struggling because of course it's uh, more interesting, there's more to say if their French is not excellent. So please don't hesitate to send me that. Uh, and in the meantime, here is a playlist with my best advice for you to learn French fast. So the kind of advice that I give in this video, but much more structured. It starts with what no one tells you and what I really wish every single French learner would know because it would make you learn French so much faster and you would avoid so many pitfalls if you would just know these things. So I will leave you with it and thank you so much for watching this video until the end and I will see you next Monday. Bye.